There we go. Yeah. We're in. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are here again. It's Wednesday, so we've got quarter law at Me Haddle at 12 o'clock. Today's going to be a little bit different um, because it is a collaborative show this week between myself and White. So Ruby's going to be answer, uh, asking the questions. I will dip out for a little bit at the start because we are actually open and live in the gallery today. So I'll be dealing with customers and then I'll pop back in afterwards. But I think starting off, we were going to briefly just talk about um, about the collaboration and and why that happened. I know like it is a little bit of a strange one, I think, like with our work, but maybe White, you can take that away. Uh, originally, uh, I popped in looking to see if there was a show space coming up in the gallery. And, um, there wasn't any this year, but Rosie had one coming up in December that she was concerned about being able to film because the gallery had been so busy. So I hijacked half of it and stole it from her, um, which is okay. And then she tried to give me the whole thing. But <laughs> I decided that, no, that wasn't fair. So we decided to do a collab show and that's where we started working on the poster to get the collab piece and took one of Rosie's pieces and I hijacked that as well um, to make the poster. So Yeah, and they will actually be for sale at the show. So we have done... Um, one collaboration piece which will be available as a print, which is pretty exciting. Um, so they'll be available at the show in an arrangement of different sizes. But I think, so what we'll do today is we'll probably talk to White first. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to shoot over here and then I'll come back shortly. So good luck guys, see you soon. Um, for everyone that doesn't know me, I'm Ruby. I'm the newest director at New Harder. I'm in the middle of my internship, which is very exciting, and we're here with White today. Um, so to begin the interview, where did it all start, and how? Oh, and when did you start creating art? Uh, my art journey, and where did it start? Originally, uh, I've always been doing art. I played a lot of music yeah. to start with, um, but I was never not making some form of artwork. I, I wrote poetry, I made books, I did that sort of stuff. My art journey has restarted over the last couple of years. I've started working with different mediums again and on a larger scale. Yeah. So I've been a bit more prolific this year, which is really good. So I'd say my new art journey started this year. Yeah. Is that a result of COVID or is that just where you are? That's a result of my body giving in and finally me giving in to actually just making the work and putting in the effort to improve. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you studied art? No, I haven't studied any form of art unless you consider a bronze sculpting course art. Um, I did make some small bronzes, but I, I wouldn't say that's art, that's more of a craft hobby as yeah. a distraction. So I did that because someone else was paying for me. Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, who are your main inspirations? Um, my art inspirations are very fluid, much like a lot of my style works. Um, I don't find, yeah. you'll never find an artist's book on my coffee table. You won't yeah. find someone's book on the shelf and like, that's the artist I most admire and be like, yeah, choose to right. be like. But I find that um, I like someone's style, I try and see if it, I can involve it in my own work and steal it, plagiarize yeah. it, and benefit from it, see if I can do it. It's the challenge of that style yeah. that I like. Um, so my inspiration is actually anything new. So okay. Anything I haven't seen before or anything that I have to try and figure out. Yeah. What inspires me with art. Um, now with your show coming up, I understand that you've got a lot of pieces. Um, is there anything that links everything together or is it just what happens in the moment? Um, it's very much what happens in the moment. Um, a lot of the, there's a lot of feasting, sea themed yeah. stuff in this show, but that was because of the crowd I was trying to create. Um, Wainui and Gisborne and where I'm living at the moment, there's a lot of people who love to see and love to see creatures. So the theme of this show is pretty much what giving people what they want. Yeah. And so a lot of that is me showing my interpretation of that. I'm not from here. I'm not an ocean person. I'm a city person. So yeah. it's my street art influence version of showing how I see the sea. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I look forward to seeing it myself. Uh, what are your favourite materials to work with? Uh, anything I can get my hands on, cheap. Yeah. To start with, um, I've started using a higher grade product, 
when I'm using paints and things yeah. like that. So it's all like high oil. It's all anytime I can buy have to buy something, it will be the best I can find. Like, but I paint a lot of my stuff on reclaimed matte at the moment because I've got yeah. hands on heap of that. Uh, I've got reclaimed arena in the show. Oh wow! I've got any timbers like my framing is done with recycled reclaimed arena board and stuff. Yeah. So anytime I can find something reclaimed, I'll do it. I'm working a lot with acrylics. Yeah. Just because the dry time is is, is quick and yeah. you know, I work in short bursts. I don't spend large amounts of time. Yeah. Do you think carrying on the reclaimed wood is something that you'll continue with? Yeah, yeah. I'll always paint on reclaimed board because I prefer board over canvas. So yeah. timber is a perfect example of what you can do. You can find an old piece of crusty wood and run it through a thicknesser and bring out the heartwood again yeah it becomes a beautiful piece of timber which then inspires something to come out of it yeah for sure um do you have any favorite pieces that you have created uh the next one the next one that's <laughs> a good answer because <laughs> um i find with my work once i've got it to a point where i'm stopping on it it's never finished yeah once i'm stopping and putting it away i'm done with it yeah. i don't even like really looking at my old work so um, a lot of the times if it sits around the house too long, I will paint over it yeah. or destroy it, which is sad but true. So come grab pieces. Um, <laughs> save them. Save them. Um, so yeah, my, my favourite piece will be the next one because I've got a challenge in my brain that I want to try to overcome. Yeah. And lastly, aside from art, what do you do in your downtime? Collect records. Um, music is a big passion for driving for me. So. Yeah. Me collecting records is what I do with all the money I get from the shows. Um, and just hoarding things. I hoard jobs, I hoard art, I hoard anything like that. So I'm just a collector. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for chatting with us today. No worries at all. We'll bring Rosie back in. Welcome back. I'm just going to zip out. And okay. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi again. Hi. <laughs> okay, we'll do the same set of questions for Rosie. Um, where did it all start and how did you start creating art? Um, it's just something I've always done. I've always created art as long as I can remember. Um, when I was really young, I just I always loved drawing and just giving pictures to people. I remember pretty much being a toddler at Disneyland and doing drawings for all the characters and going the next day and giving it to them all. Um, but also entering art competitions. Um, yeah, for as long as I can remember from school, I've, I've yeah, just, I've, it's something that I've always done, I've always been passionate about. Um, and when I relocated from Spain to the UK um, during high school, it was something that I really started getting serious about there because I was taking um, really great art classes. I had a great art teacher and she was really pushing me to go to college and, and actually make a career out of it, so, yeah. Um, have you studied art? Yes, so obviously, like I just said, high school. Um, from there, I went on to do two years of art at college. Um, that was in the UK. So I studied a bit of everything. It was kind of a mixed bag of, of art, art history. Um, it was kind of metal work and clay work and textiles and just general, general arts across the board. Um, and then I specialised into illustration and did three years of illustration at university. Um, who are your main inspirations? Um, there's so many artists that I love. Um, because I am mainly illustration based, I love artists that work with pencil. Um, I use watercolour as well, so I do like, I'm, I'm not really into really bold and vibrant colours. I like watercolour and, and sort of I'm quite monotone stuff, um, but some of my favourite artists would be Audrey Kawasaki, um, Karina Zarafos, really people that use that female form and a lot of nature in their work as well, because that's kind of what my work is about. Yeah. Um, what are your favourite materials to work with? Um, favourite materials, yeah, pencil, watercolour. I mean, I do other stuff, but generally I stick to those inks. I do a lot of black black and grey, a lot of ink work. Um, yeah, I love I love the, the way that I work with my watercolour is a little bit different. I've kind of developed my own style over the years where I kind of dab it away and I can work back on top. So it sort of gives me room 
to make mistakes almost. So I quite I quite enjoy yeah. that that I can make changes as I go. That's an interesting part of your art that you have the insight to. And everyone else sees the final product, but you know the history of. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't work in the way that you should work with <laughs> watercolors. Um, yeah, it's totally totally backwards, really. So I yeah. It's, yeah, I do like if I work with a base first, um, I usually dab that away as I go for parts that I want lightening up and then I work over the top of that in pencil and any really dark tones or highlights I'll work on top of that again, um, often with darker pens or white acrylic paint, so that's kind of how I get the, the levels of depth to it, which I hopefully achieve, that's what I aim for. Uh, do you have a favourite piece that you've ever created? Um, Yes, I think so. I was having to think about this question before. It's really hard, um, like White was saying, like when you when you kind of do work, especially if you're selling work, because you kind of do it and then it's gone and you haven't got it all set there in front of you to look at. Um, I Before this show, this is the first time that I've had a bulk of my work actually sort of at home. Otherwise, it's kind of you do a piece, you sell it, and you, you don't think about it again. But there was there was a piece that comes to mind, and I sold it at a market here actually, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, and it was when I first started doing the markets and I probably sold it too cheap, I would say. Thinking about it now, going back, I would definitely <laughs> have not sold it for that price. Um, but it was it was, it was was a large work and it was sort of one of my first female portraits that I'd done on a really large scale. Um, and I'm not often, anyone that knows me, I'm not ever happy with my work, but that was one piece that I did where I was just really happy with it. And yeah. I almost wish that I kept it, but I hope whoever has it is enjoying <laughs> it. Uh, lastly, aside from art, what do you do in your downtime? Um, there, I don't have much downtime. So I've got two children, um, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, which keep me super busy. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm running the gallery so that, yeah, I, there's not much downtime available there, so it's really just spending time with the kids. I think things that I would love to do, with, I, I used to travel a lot, that's something that in years to come I'd love to get back into. Um, and I've recently bought a piano, which I haven't really had a chance to play, but I did used to play piano, so that's something I would love to get back into as well, and back into, into music. Yeah, we're quite a musical family, and we love music, so that's definitely something I will aim for in my downtime. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, I don't know, not really. Oh, we've we got, got a couple questions. of questions. If you weren't running a gallery, what would you be doing? Oh, if I wasn't running a gallery, what would I be doing? I'd be, oh, it's hard. It's hard because I don't think about it because I am here so much. I mean, I would be, I would be really probably, yeah, focusing on my work. It's something that has, has developed quite quickly since I've been in New Zealand because I was always traveling before I was doing little bits of work um, here and there and doing commissions and that's really where I got into where I got into portraiture it was traveling overseas so much and just meeting all these beautiful it's, it's women that I really focus on with my work there's a lot of nature and there's a lot of women um, I've always been interested in anatomy my whole life since I was really young I used to I've always collected bones and teeth and fossils and dead animals which sounds really <laughs> <laughs> which sounds really bizarre to some um, but it's just something that I've always been really interested in and I've, I've loved and it's something that's fascinated me and that's where a lot of my surrealism kind of work has come from and it's come from kind of just combining those different anatomies um, yeah and just focusing on kind of form natural form um, and that's it with the portraiture too with with all the travel and meeting all these amazing women all over the world and just just focusing on as I started the more I went away the more I sort of realized that you know just the different features in people's faces and the different shapes and I kind of just became obsessed with it to a degree um, and that's sort of where my portraits come from it's they've all got a different personality they're all based on different women um, and I don't, I don't do prints of them, and that is one thing that people have asked me a lot if I would do prints of my works. But with, with my portraits and, and the women that I create, it's not something I want to do because they are all super unique and super individual, um, and they all kind of have a different, a different story to them, and, and you can create that however you want. You know, some of them are 
holding their chin up and they're powerful and some of them are looking right at you and they kind of all have their own their own story and their own personality. Um, some of them I name, some of them I don't. Yeah, it's you just kind of have to come and see it, I guess. <laughs> just come and have a look and that's kind of one thing that, yeah, that I like people to sort of read into themselves is, is looking at those portraits, kind of trying to gauge who that woman is and how they relate to them. Everyone relates to something differently. Um, yeah, and I guess it's something within yourself. It's every time I create them, sometimes you can sort of tell how I'm feeling when I'm creating them. Some of them, yeah, some of them look a bit sad. Some of them are really happy. <laughs> and it's just, that's just how it is. Yes. Do you have anything you'd like to add, right? What's back in? <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> back in. Um, no, it was great. Thank you for Thank taking the time to be here today. Um, I think the key thing to remember is, yes, there is a show on Friday. Yes, there is. Yeah. 6 to 8 p.m. So come along and uh, see a strange juxtaposition of work between my eclectic over-the-top style and some beautiful portraiture. That's it. So it's just going to be a big combination. It's going to be a really interesting, diverse crowd, I think, yes. which will be really cool. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to see you all. So 6 to 8 p.m. Friday. We've got an event on Facebook and we will be taking registrations through the event first. So it's just you chuck your email in. Um, you can do that before the show. But if you come down on the night, you can just put in your email when you get to the door. Um, if you do it prior to the show, obviously, you'll skip the queues and come straight in. But yeah, we'd love to see you. There's live music. That'll be awesome. We've got an amazing local band, Golden Rule, so they'll be coming to play. Um, free bar. Lots of cool stuff happening. White is also doing a raffle, Ooh, yes. which he will tell you about now. Uh, so there'll be a raffle with $20 tickets. Uh, for the people out there who want fresh art in their life, we're putting together a piece where you come along, you pay $20 per ticket, you buy as many tickets as you like, and at the end of it, on next Thursday, I'll be drawing it out. Uh, there'll be a chance to get a commission from me. So at the end of the raffle, whoever wins the raffle gets to pick what I draw, how I draw it, what I draw it on, within reason. I'm not going <laughs> to, uh, some things, dragons, not going to happen. Maybe small dragon. Um, so we'll put a piece together and you'll get, ask for a dragon now. <laughs> and you'll be able to um, have that on your wall, an original that you helped to create. So. I think it's a good way coming up to Christmas for you to be able to put a little bit towards it and hopefully get a lot back out of it. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to be buying some raffle tickets <laughs> myself. Awesome. And there's one more thing about the raffle, um, about the price of the commission piece. price of the commission piece will be based on how many tickets go in. So the more people that buy tickets, the larger the scale of the piece you get the chance to win. So it's like an ever-growing balloon or an infection. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be interesting. It's the first yeah. time I've tried to do something in this style, um, but it could be a lot of fun and I'm going to keep nudging, maybe get Rosie to do something, maybe. Interesting. So, we'll I was see. just thinking maybe I should do something fun and exciting. Coming up to Christmas, it's, it's a good chance. A, I will have a think about it. I have tried to stop doing commissions lately because I am flat out in all areas of life. Um, I can also not promise that this piece will be painted before New Year's, <laughs> but you never know, I might Go on a bender and paint something. But comes with comes. <laughs> It'll be, we'll work on it, we'll figure it out. Cool. Nice, thank you. Awesome, yeah. well, Thanks, thank you guys. Um, that's, that's us for today, I think. Is yeah. there anything else we wanted to add? Thanks for tuning we'll in. See you all on Friday. Thank yeah, you. thanks for tuning in. And also, we will see you next week on Wednesday for another artist interview. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who it is yet, but we'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> see you soon. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Oh no, it's not.